all chiefs are, are grappling with a really uh, enormous challenge. And in fact, to be fair, in some forces, the challenge is greater than others. Uh, we've got a pretty formidable challenge here, but I know colleagues are in, in harder positions, more difficult positions. We've got to try and take 20% of the costs out of policing over the next four years with no reduction in the service we provide to the public, no reduction in the protection, and in fact an expectation from our communities, from politicians, from our police authorities, that crime will continue to go down. So that's a massive ask of any leader. Um, we've done a lot of work in Thames Valley thinking very hard about if we're going to take that sort of cost out and protect service levels of the public, how on earth do we do that? And we started thinking about this um, in earnest about 18 months ago. Um, one of the things that I was keen to do was to collaborate much more with, with colleagues in Hampshire. Um, and that's been very uh, tricky uh, doing the negotiations, but I'm very pleased to say we've now got a joint um, technology department with them. Um, we, from next month, will have a joint ops department with them covering um, the armed response vehicles, um, the dog section, um, roads policing. So um, by working with Hampshire around specialist functions, specialist units, uh, we can save resources and I would argue not reduce the service. So that's uh, a really good way of trying to uh, reduce money, reduce costs, but maintain service levels. One of the other things that we've been doing um, is using all the value for money profiles we get from the inspectorate saying where do we spend more in terms of value than other forces. Because um, costs are quite high we're in the southeast, our accommodation costs have always been high. So what can we do to, to hot desk? What can we do to have many more modern buildings? How can we cut our costs there? Looking at transport, our transport costs are quite high. What can we do to reduce those? What can we do to reduce our overtime costs? So using the data that's available that sort of benchmarks us to say where do we need to get uh, cheaper, where do we need to cut cost uh, in Thames Valley. But one of the other things we've done, which I guess has been the hardest, is, is the change to the structures. Um, it seemed to me if we were going to lose 20%, um, we really didn't want to cut the officers who were on patrol or who work in the neighbourhoods. And looking at how we might do that, it came apparent to me that really what we wanted to be doing is um, more shared services, having less uh, units be their um, advice on human resources, be their intelligence units, be their operational units, less out there in basic command units and bring them into a shared service to save money. Uh, but also looking at did we need that extra layer of management between the local commanders who work at district or unitary level and headquarters. And so in effect what we've done is reduce a management level, take out a management level in order to preserve the amount of people actually doing policing uh, and how have we dealt with all the functions that were done at that intermediate management le level, we've brought them into shared services at headquarters. Now that doesn't mean that most of the force is now working at headquarters in Kidlington. What it means is the units that are spread out across the force are line managed uh, from central departments. Um, our big day is the 4th of April. We've done an awful lot of planning. Uh, we went through all our plans uh, this week with the police authority and I'm pretty confident we've got everything in place to go live on the 4th of April. Um, over the last um, 10 years, I guess, we've had the um, things like the uh, robbery initiative where we had the Prime Minister sitting in Cobra really wanting to respond to um, the numbers of robberies in our towns and city centres um, and all the politics and debate about whether that was appropriate or not. Um, and of course at the moment I suspect we're facing our, our greatest challenges and I say that for two reasons. One is because of the situation the country finds itself in. As I said earlier we are being asked to reduce our costs by 20%. That's a fifth of the effort going in. But actually, politicians want more effort coming out, more outcomes, not less. So that's a huge, huge challenge for the service. And I think we can work smarter, uh, and that's what we've been trying to do here. Um, but it's a huge challenge. And of course, um, maybe we will be stronger and leaner at the end of it. But in the meantime, there's a massive issue around morale, uh, you know, really 
trying to lead through this is very, very challenging. What do you say to people who are losing their jobs? What do you say to people who are worried about the ability to provide for their families? So really challenging um, in terms of costs. Um, but I do understand why it's got to happen. I think the second thing is the, the current bill before Parliament, uh, the Police Reform and Social Responsibility Bill, its proposals for police and crime commissioners um, are potentially very radical uh, in terms of the potential for them to change the way we know, uh, the way we've come to um, practice policing in this country. And, and that's why, along with other chief constables, we've said quite clearly it's not our job to comment uh, on the proposal publicly because that's about cops getting involved in politics, which is never a good idea. We don't like it when the politicians get involved in policing, uh, and we should, we should uh, observe that. But I do think that we have the right to say the bill at the moment needs more checks and balances. Policing has to be impartial to maintain the confidence of the public. We cannot be holden to partial party politicians, and we need to be very thoughtful about how we construct that relationship and we're pushing very hard for that to be written clearly and whether it's a protocol or a code of practice which goes before Parliament so this is the role of the Home Secretary, this is the role of the Commissioner, this is the role of the Chief Constable. So that, that is absolutely key. And we're also very concerned about the fact that in policing at the moment I am responsible for local policing but I also play my part in the effort to combat terrorism or serious and organised crime. In fact, we run the counter-terrorist unit for the South East region. What we need to make sure is that the, the commissioners are not just focused on local issues. Now, now the, the, the legislation does say that they're responsible for the whole of policing, but we need to make sure in what we're calling a strategic policing requirement that that's actually written down so local commissioners can't just focus on antisocial behaviour on local burglaries, however much the public are clamouring for it, and however important it is, because actually it's really important we work together to deal with organised crime or terrorism. Um, I think there will be a great focus on local policing, uh, and I think what exists nationally will change. So I do see a potential for much uh, clearer national coordination around the fight against organised crime, much greater national coordination about procuring, um, whether it's uh, vehicles or uniform, and, and a, a real desire to try and save money by being smarter and more organised nationally with, with all the suppliers. Uh, and I do see uh, some very radical changes around um, how we do um, police leadership, how we set the standards in policing. You know, at the moment, uh, we have ACPO and we have ACPO guidance. Uh, the proposal is that in the future there will be some sort of institute for policing. I think that's potentially a very exciting idea, but it really depends very much on what the terms of reference are, how it's organised, what its responsibilities are. So it could well be in four years' time that we'll have a, a Royal Institute of Policing, uh, and that will be um, taking us to somewhere we've never been before. Um, but there's an awful lot of distance to travel between now and then.